It touches every aspect of our lives. Yet most of us don't think about the hundreds of gallons of water that are needed to produce the food for our table, the clothes we wear, and the products we use every day. Since water affects so much of our daily life, it's important to understand where it comes from, how it gets to us, and whether we'll have enough for the future. In the natural world, animals and plants move to the rhythm of the seasons, taking advantage of food or water when they are plentiful. For example, squirrels gather food in autumn to sustain them through the winter months. During the rainy season, the cactus stores water so it can survive when water is scarce. Humans, too, have learned to cope with seasons of abundance and scarcity. Here in California, summers are hot and dry. Water is plentiful only in winter and spring, but we need water all year long. The challenge, then, is to provide a reliable supply of water year-round. One way we've met this challenge is by building one of the largest water delivery systems in the world, the State Water Project, a 660-mile-long network of aqueducts, pipelines, power plants, and storage facilities that provides water to two-thirds of California's people. Collecting and moving water isn't a new concept in California. In the 1700s, Spanish missionaries built irrigation systems to water their crops. Since then, Californians have struggled to bring water to where they live and farm. Two problems are at the heart of this struggle. The first is that two-thirds of California's rain and snow fall in the northern part of the state. However, most of the demand for water is in the San Francisco Bay Area, the San Joaquin Valley, and in Southern California. That's where most of the people live and where huge areas of fertile farmland are located. The second problem with California's water supply is that it's difficult to predict rain and snowfall from one year to the next. The amount of water we receive often occurs in cycles. Some years we get a lot of water, other years we don't but we never know for certain which kind of year we'll have. Californians wanted a statewide system for storing and distributing water so they would have a reliable water supply year-round. But in the 1930s, when such a project was proposed, Californians were caught in a depression. The state couldn't afford to build a massive system. So California asked the federal government to build the Central Valley Project. This system, operated by the Federal Bureau of Reclamation, carries water from mountain reservoirs to dry areas in the central part of the state, primarily farms in the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valleys. But each year, more land was converted to agriculture, and the state's population continued to grow. This created a demand for more water. In 1960, California voters approved bonds to pay for the State Water Project, designed to serve cities as well as farms. The California Department of Water Resources built the project and operates it today. Wilson. 29 public water agencies in California have contracted for water and pay for construction, operation, and maintenance of the project. The project's major storage facility is Lake Oroville, which captures runoff from the Feather River watershed. It can store three and a half million acre-feet of water. That's more than a hundred billion gallons. Water that's released from Oroville flows down the Feather into the Sacramento River. Other rivers and streams merge with the Sacramento 
carrying water to the heart of the water delivery system in California, the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta. The Delta is a maze of islands and channels where the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers meet before flowing to the San Francisco Bay and out to the ocean. In the North Delta, pumps send water through the North Bay Aqueduct, an underground pipeline that carries water to Napa and Solano counties. In the South Delta, the bank's pumping plant lifts water into the longest man-made waterway in the United States, the 440-mile California Aqueduct. As water moves down the aqueduct, it's delivered to various water agencies. Water pumped into the South Bay Aqueduct is sent to Santa Clara and Alameda counties. The rest of the water continues its journey down the California Aqueduct into San Luis Reservoir. Water is temporarily stored here until it's needed by the water contractors. A hundred miles south of San Luis Reservoir, the coastal aqueduct branches off to deliver water to San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties. In the main aqueduct, water continues its journey south, some of it diverted to irrigate farmlands in the southern San Joaquin Valley. At the base of the rugged Tehachapi Mountains, the A.D. Edmonston pumping plant pushes water 2,000 feet up the mountain slope, higher than any single lift in the world. From there, it flows through three miles of tunnels, then into the east and west branches of the aqueduct to cities in Southern California. The pumps that push the water through the aqueduct use tremendous amounts of energy. To reduce the costs of running these pumps, the State Water Project operates nine hydroelectric power generating plants where water is used to produce electricity. During years when water is plentiful, the plants generate a lot of power, reducing the cost of operating the project. The amount of rain and snowfall also affects demand for project water. If it's been a dry winter, then there will be a high demand for project water. In a wet year, there will be less demand, since contractors can depend more on local supplies. So to plan and operate the project most efficiently, it's important to know how much water will be available each year. During the winter, Surveyors measure the depth and moisture content of mountain snow. This information is used to predict how much water will be available to fill reservoirs in spring and for state water project deliveries. The total amount of water sent to each water district is planned months in advance, but daily water deliveries are adjusted constantly because of weather, irrigation schedules, water demand, and other factors. To, 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 to keep it going to State water project operations are coordinated with other government agencies and environmental and water user groups. This coordination is done to improve conditions for fish in the Delta, while maintaining the amount of water available to state water project agencies. The Project Operations Center in Sacramento and control centers along the aqueduct monitor water delivery, power generation, and all other operations 24 hours a day, every day of the year. Dispatchers respond to changing conditions. For instance, at the Skinner Fish Facility, fish are salvaged that would otherwise be caught in the delta pumps. If the number of endangered fish pulled toward the pumps becomes too high, then project operations dispatchers adjust the pumping schedule. They also regulate pumps and gates to make sure the right amount of water reaches water agencies when it's needed. 
By regulating water releases from project reservoirs, the State Water Project also helps control flooding. Oroville Dam has significantly reduced flooding from the Feather River. Besides flood control and water deliveries, the State Water Project provides recreation, water skiing, swimming, picnicking, and camping. Fishing is encouraged at many sites along the aqueduct and at the reservoirs. Anglers can fish for striped bass, largemouth bass, catfish, rainbow trout, and salmon. With its dams, reservoirs, pumps, and aqueducts, the State Water Project is a massive engineering accomplishment. However, in many places it has changed the natural environment, affecting fish and other wildlife. Changes can enhance the environment through creation of new habitat, fisheries, and wetlands. The Department of Water Resources tries to avoid or limit environmental damage. If it occurs, then the department mitigates for it. Mitigation may involve moving a species to a new area, planting similar vegetation in another location, or establishing and preserving wildlife habitats. For example, the Department of Water Resources has created natural wildlife areas at Lake Oroville, the Delta, and in Southern California. Gravel and stream bank restoration projects have improved river habitat, encouraging fish to spawn. Fish ladders enable fish to navigate around barriers, like diversion dams, to reach spawning grounds upstream. Another environmental project involves salinity control in the Sassoon Marsh. Special gates help maintain the right balance of salt and fresh water for plants and animals which thrive in brackish marsh conditions. California is fortunate to have one of the most sophisticated and efficient water delivery systems in the world. But the state's continued population growth is challenging California's ability to meet needs now and in the future. Two major factors limit the amount of water the project can reliably deliver. Environmental restrictions in the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta and storage capacity of project reservoirs. As a result, the project is sometimes unable to deliver all the water that's requested, especially during dry periods. Now, I also have concerns about this access road coming up through here. The challenge facing state water project managers is to increase deliveries without causing adverse environmental impacts. Representatives from state and federal government, industry, agriculture, environmental groups, and others are investigating various proposals to solve this dilemma. The outcome of these discussions will affect the future of the State Water Project in California and the people who depend on it.